look at that. <clears throat> I've been wanting to buy a tadpole kit since I was quite young, which was many years ago. And now, I finally have my hands on one. Alright, first thing. It looks like we have the mortar for in between the two track extensions on the rear. Oh wow, look at all those little roller wheels. Look how tiny those are. All right, so my little finger, the wheel is still much smaller than my fingernail. This might be a bit of a challenge to put together. These tanks look a lot bigger on YouTube. I guess everyone else is doing the same thing I am, holding them really close to the camera. Oh, cool. Drive sprockets here. Some other little sprockets there. There's the drive chain. Has a nice little sag in it. That's a great detail. Though this part, I'm actually not going to use. I'm going to assemble it as much as I can, as if it were a regular model, but I'm either going to 3D print something to add to these, or 3D print a new version of these that I can attach a belt to and run that belt to some brushless motors and make this RC. Are these shoes? Oh, I didn't know it came with these. I was actually tempted, or have been tempted, to buy a whole new tank kit so I can get these tank shoes, an unditching beam, and the sliders for the unditching beam. I didn't know it came with these. Maybe that's awesome. Hopefully, it comes with the unditching beam and the sliders, too. Then I won't have to buy another kit. <clears throat> oh, wow. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you can see the details. Look at this piece. Look at all those little rivets. That's absolutely fantastic. That's great. They're so tiny. Now, I was originally going to do just a basic paint job on this, but I saw a video series on YouTube a gentleman made where he did an absolutely beautiful job weathering the tank that he had, and I'll post that video in the, com er, in the description when I do the paint video for this. That'll be after the basic build, build video and after the RC conversion video. Look at this. See what that is? There's the slider. Oh, that's awesome. There's the slider for the unditching beam. That means I don't have to buy a whole new model kit. Which is great news for me. Go ahead and move on to these. So these are the easy tracks. Let's see exactly how easy they are. Yeah, I gotta say, that's about as easy as it can possibly get. Ta da! Yeah, that. That's so easy. Really fast. The only... I mean, they're small, which you're going to get with any model this size, obviously. But um, instead of having to glue those four pieces on there separately and taking about a week just to put the tracks together, that's going to take a matter of minutes for each track. I believe on this kit there's a 176 per side. I think somebody said that in their other model video. Don't quote me on that, though. Beautiful. Those are great. No wonder these come so highly recommended. That was fantastic. Alrighty, here's little bits of the sponson. So. 
All kinds of lovely little details. I really didn't realize how tiny this was going to be. Here we go. This gives us a much better view of how big it is. So from my little finger to my thumb, the outside of each one is about 8 inches exactly. So I'm going to say this is about 12 inches long. And look at all that. All that track tensioner looks so good. I don't know if you can see it. The camera's not wanting to focus on it. excited for this build. I haven't done a model in a really long time. So I jumped into this one. I usually jump into everything head first and go about as deep with it as I possibly can. So why should this be any different? Some little rubber caps. I don't know what they're for right now. I'm sure I'll find out at some point. so tiny. That photo etching is absolutely beautiful. Here's a little paint card. I really like this. I don't know why. It just looks really neat. And finally, the instructions. The way they did that is very reminiscent of the era, which I'm sure was intentional. That's neat. Old mixed with the new. Now looking at these, these are very simplistic. There could be a little more contrast. I want to say the details on the tank are a bit light, but at least the detail that you're adding to the tank is darker. Very much step by step. I'm okay with instructions that give you a few steps at once as long as it actually shows what you're doing. This is very clear and concise. Anyone could build this kit. Most of the numbers are sizable, so you can read them fairly easily. This, there's my little finger again for scale. Um, definitely have your glasses ready or a magnifying glass. That's what my grandpa always used if your vision's a little fuzzy. Oh, 117 per side. I lied. Yeah, I have no complaints with these instructions. They should be great for anyone, really. There's your final assembly. This will be nice. I can put the fuel pump for the flamethrowers inside here. I can throw a fuel tank somewhere up in there, throw the batteries back here. The motors, though, I think I'm going to have to put the motors kind of 50-50 so the drive portion is inside the track and the body of the motor is inside the body. So that's going to be a little tricky. So I should be able to do the model build. The body I can build all the way. The sides, I think I'm going to have to have those open until I figure out exactly how the motor's going in there. I might be able to dummy that just for a build video. We'll find out. 
and that'll be the next video doing a traditional model build on this before I go full Dr. Frankenstein. And there's the paint again. And if you like this idea and you want to support further madness, check us out at paradoxcube.com. We're also on Instagram, paradoxcube. Though I should warn you, the website and Instagram are completely different than the YouTube channel, but they're run by the same person, which would be me. And whichever one you want to support, I greatly appreciate it. If you don't want to support any, that's totally fine too. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the build video. Deuces.